Really? We gonna just ask him them? Okay, make your bet. It's gonna be a fight or not? Hey guys. How can there be Kaimaki here? Huh? Who are you? What do you want? A student? <laughs> What's a student from Sumeru City doing in Port Ormos? Ah, well, if it's info you want, you've come to the right place. The question is, can you afford it? This is the merchant's address. Whatever you're looking for, you'll find it there. Hmm? Well, what are you waiting for? Oh, that's right! We heard you mention the Scarlet King just now. We're actually interested to know more because... Uh... Because... We're... Uh, archaeology students! <laughs> <laughs> Fine. Since you've already handed over the Mora, I guess I can throw in a little extra info. As you can see, members of Ain al Ahmar are devout believers of the Scarlet King. Years ago, the Scarlet King founded the great desert nation that was our homeland. It was an advanced civilization, far beyond anything you'll see in present-day Sumeru. The Scarlet King was the rightful god of wisdom, but he was betrayed by a companion he trusted. She even stripped him of his title, God of Wisdom. So, you mean the traitor was... Greater Lord Ruka Devata, yes. That shameless wretch destroyed the Scarlet King's civilization, and our ancestors were forced to flee to this land where we were made to suffer the tyranny of our enemies. Furthermore, she conspired with the Academia to cover up the truth of her actions and create the merciful and benevolent facade for which she is now known. Ugh, just thinking about it sickens me. <sighs> But the story doesn't end there, oh no. The Scarlet King isn't truly dead. The voice of the Oracle has been heard in the desert, prophesying his resurrection. Mark my words, our god shall return. And when that day comes, all followers of the traitor and all the desert dwellers who have forgotten their true god will suffer retribution together. If what I'm saying makes you shiver with fear, it might not be too late for you to become a believer of the Scarlet King. <laughs> I don't have anything to say to you Academia people about that. I think this conversation has reached its end. Not just yet. This man is a fraud. Uh-oh. Huh? Wait, ass. You again? T deranged Academia lunatic. Yes, it's me again. I already warned you that if you weren't willing to sit and discuss things with me, I'd take measures to make things... Uncomfortable for you. Man, she looks intimidated. How do I bet why you that the accent? Man, he's really a game with that. Listen to me. That address he gave you is fake. Or at least you won't find a merchant waiting for you there. This group has been boasting all around that they can provide information on a certain item as a means of luring people into their territory. Once you show up, they keep up the act until they have hard evidence that you want to purchase said item. Then they use that to squeeze you for all the more of your worth. Hey! Shut it all, Haytham! What are you playing at trying to ruin our business like this, hmm? I told you the other day. I wish to discuss my terms with your boss. Ha! The boss made it perfectly clear that he won't negotiate with you. Yes, and in no uncertain terms. But that was then. It does not preclude him from changing his mind in the future. I'm warning you, don't push us, or this could get ugly. 
We don't usually get rough with people from the academia because it just complicates things. For a lunatic like you, though, we might just have to make an exception. If you're suggesting that we escalate this from a verbal exchange to a physical one, I accept. After all, even the Archons used war to negotiate the ownership of Tavat. If, on the other hand, we can't agree on any means of negotiation at all, then I'm afraid my next course of action will sting a little more than the mere falling through of a few business deals. I will jeopardize the Aramite's reputation, which I know you value above all else. I am quite confident that if I began to take such action, your boss would willingly approach me himself. However, I fear that by then, some things will have happened that cannot be undone. Also, a word of advice. I suggest you tell your boss exactly what happened here today. Otherwise, he might blame you for not telling him in the future. What did you say? Consider this. Have I ever failed to follow through on my word in the past? This guy is really out of his mind. Okay, then. If you really have a death wish, let's meet a week from today. The pier in front of the Pharos Lighthouse, four o'clock in the afternoon, sharp. Don't expect us to hold back. Not so fast. First, you return the 500,000 mora to them. Hm. Huh, we got our money back. Please, I beg you, don't provoke them. We can't afford any trouble with this crowd. They haven't even paid for their food yet. Ah, Mr. Iman. There appears to be fewer staff in the restaurant recently. This wouldn't happen to be because they're all busy spreading the word to the students, would it? I, uh... Well... <laughs> someone who chooses to do business with a group like that really can't afford to get so flustered the instant someone confronts them about it. Consider the meal compensation for our silence. I'd say you're getting an excellent deal. Whoa! Did you see that? He not only got us our mora back, but sent the Amorites running too! Plus, he seems to know a lot about what's going on around here. Let's catch up with him and ask some questions! He went that way! After him! What do you want? No need for thanks. My goal was to get to them, and you two gave me just the opportunity I needed. We're even. Oh, I advise you to keep your distance from them. Since they weren't able to make off with your mora in the end, they might harass you again in the future. <sighs> All right. Goodbye. Since you tore through their scam right in front of them, you must know the real story about a... Ahem... <clears throat> certain something, no? Who exactly are you two? And why are you inquiring about that? A student. <laughs> right. Look, you should know that those thugs conducting business with you had nothing to do with your lie. He's really strong. Weren't you saying something about a physical exchange? We can help with that. He doesn't even have a vision. Forget it. Maybe not, but he can still use elemental energy. Otherwise, there's no way we'd go asking for info from I'm... I'll... I... Um... From guys like that. Those high-headed thugs are definitely gonna bring a lot of backup for your next meeting. Even if you don't go alone, you won't regret taking us with you. Hmm. Uh... <sighs> All right. I accept. Got a pen and paper? If you're searching for someone who sells that kind of merchandise, I'll give you one of their addresses, and you can try your luck. 
We'll reconvene at the appointed time by the pier. It doesn't matter if you show up or not. Um, so, since you were happy to give us this merchant's information, does that mean you can tell us exactly what we're after? You were willing to part with 500,000 mora for something and you didn't even know what it was? <laughs> okay. Well, if you truly are as skilled as you claim, then you can beat the answer out of them when they become hostile. Look, if you've been making inquiries, then you have to know something by now. Tell me what you know so far, so I don't waste time repeating information. We know it's connected to the academia somehow, and that not only do the Aramites deal in it, but some students want to get a hold of it too. Hmm, what else? You know almost everything there is to know, but you're unable to compile this information because you've never seen the object before. This is what you've been looking for. I don't think it does the nicest. Huh? I mind can't tell what it is. It looks like some kind of ornament. This is a knowledge capsule. To put it simply, it's a vessel that can store a fixed quantity of canned knowledge. It's like a miniature Akasha. Anyone who links it to their personal Akasha terminal instantly becomes privy to its contents. Correct. Anyone. Unlike the Akasha, which heavily regulates who can access what information, knowledge capsules confer their contents without any requisites. That's amazing! It's essentially a convenient and harmless vestibule for knowledge. Unfortunately, it's illegal in Sumeru to privately possess or trade them. They were created as a means for scholars to transfer knowledge gained from Ermansoul into the Akasha, and are intended to be destroyed immediately after use. But despite strict regulations, some of these knowledge capsules will always escape destruction. After all, there will always be those in this world who are dissatisfied with life as designed for them by the Akasha and wish to change their fate. Over the past century, a wide variety of canned knowledge has been leaked from the academia. Now, in Port Ormos, the valuable ones are a means to Mora for the Aramites. Meanwhile, those which the Aramites deem to be useless to them occasionally prove useful to the common citizens and hapless academia students. Well, I think that about sums it up. Ah, oh, so that's your true objective. With our current arrangement, I don't believe I can offer an answer. <sighs> You're still resolved. Fine. Let's talk somewhere with fewer people. Let's continue our conversation here. If you wish to learn more about the knowledge capsule that the Academia lost, then you must help me with something. I need you to find someone named Dory, a traveling merchant. Unlike the peddlers who hawk inferior knowledge capsules, she often has quality goods in stock. Some say that as long as there is profit to be made, there is nothing she won't dare to sell. Finally, we're gonna meet her. She's guarded against people from the academia because most of her wares don't comply with academia regulations. I think she blacklisted me. I met with her informant, but it soon became clear that they had no intention of letting me get any further. Become one of Dory's customers and earn her trust. This is my condition for further collaboration. Why do you want us to meet with her? Until you complete this task, you don't have question privileges. Ugh, fine. So how do we go about doing this? You two are outlanders who haven't been here for long, so Dory should view you as safe clients. I'll give you the informant's address and their contact password. Beyond the password, though, I have no way of knowing what other tricks she might have up her sleeve. You'll have to improvise. Uh, this is kind of nerve-wracking. The true challenge begins after you meet her. She has a keen nose for Mora and a shrewd eye for wares. 
and she only likes customers who she deems to have good taste. I'll prepare some funds for you. Buy her highest quality wares and earn her approval. Look, we only just saw a knowledge capsule for the first time. We don't know how to tell which ones are good and which ones are bad. Uh, is that something we can learn quickly? Hmm, that's true. Have you two heard of Elemental Sight? Oh, that's a surprise. Guess I'll have to hold you in higher regard. Anyway, that ability should resolve your issue. Here are two knowledge capsules. Tell me, can you detect any difference in their quality? Um, they look the same to Paimon. Try inspecting them with elemental sight. Rumor has it that higher quality knowledge capsules generally appear brighter when viewed through elemental sight. That's because knowledge originates from Ermensoul, the root of Dendro power itself. The more powerful the knowledge, the richer it is in Dendro energy. However, some canned knowledge with a high concentration of elemental energy is of little use in contemporary times, so those capsules are of little value. Using elemental sight is merely a stopgap measure but it should suffice for earning Dory's trust. That sounds pretty impressive. Here's a sheet with the informant's location and contact password, and here is the Mora for purchasing canned knowledge. Don't be cheap. You'll need to spend to catch Dory's eye. If there's any Mora left over, just keep it. Oh, and be sure to exercise some caution. There have been Matra present in Port Ormos lately. Your efforts will be for naught if they catch you. Matra? <sighs> they belong to the Academia's regulatory body. They also handle cases of illegal canned knowledge transactions. Like I said, the Academia has banned both their trade and possession. The Matra are razor sharp. You're in for nothing good if they lock their sights onto you. If you two want to back out, now's the time. Okay, then we have a deal. If you succeed in your dealings with Dory, come find me at the Wikela Funduk. We'll have an open discussion then. Looking at what Al Haytham wrote, Dory's informant is a traitor near Old Ormos. Let's follow these instructions and try to get in contact with him. Hello. What are you two looking to buy? Wait. Are you sure you're remembering that right? Uh... Hyman doesn't think it was that on the paper. <laughs> what a unique palette. We have unripe horror fruits, but we usually keep them in the back. I'll have someone escort you. Following the paper got us past the first round. Ronak, these two want to buy unripe horror fruits. Show them to the warehouse. Got it. You two, please follow me. You two have a fascinating fashion sense. We haven't seen a customer wearing a Sumeru rose for quite some time. Uh, hold on. Let me think. Sumeru rose means common merch. Um, no. Look again. We're obviously wearing morning flowers. Ah, my mistake. I do apologize. Whew. That pop quiz sure was scary. Ah, the warehouse is up ahead. Please follow me. Oh, are you kidding me? <laughs> 